Okay, now uh, in our module 5, we learn on process scheduling. So let's take a look. Uh, mostly at the beginning, similar your previous module, it's more on the theory. Uh, we have uh, four things that will be covered. First is basic concept, scheduling, scheduling criteria, and scheduling algorithm. That's why it's come up with the equation letter. So the objective for our module first is to produce you with the CPU scheduling. You're going to find R uh, and bumping into IO. Uh, input output um, scheduling and also uh, what else burst okay uh, input output cpu burst so when that all process will be happen which uh, is the basic multi-program operation operating system okay and another one is to describe various type of scheduling uh, CPU scheduling algorithm. So let's take a look in the theory first. First on the basic concept. So maximum CPU utilization obtained with your multi-program which is similar on what is our objective one here. Most processes uh, exhibit with the following criteria. First of all, you need to know that you will have and obtain the CPU burst first and then it will be followed by input output. After that, it will look again CPU burst and input output and etc. Mm -hmm. It will be continuous following. And for CPU or might be input output also, it is a cycle. That's why I mentioned from here and then it's go back. From here, go back. It is like a looping and also a cycle. So this cycle is a process education. Consists of cycle of your CPU education and input output weight. CPU burst education is of the main concern. Okay, now here is the example. Here is the example of your CPU input output burst cycle. You can see first of all, you're going to see the burst CPU burst. And it is the uh, CPU education. This is your CPU education. What is the program that you your CPU will handle? It will be load. Might be it can add, might be it can also read. Similar also in your program. Last time you have like move, uh, EAX, uh, fire, might be. So you can add it to uh, your register. So this is all been done. And this is all a process by CPU. We call as a CPU bus. After that, because it will follow by the input output burst, but input output burst is a waiting process. Then it will be waiting for input output instruction because that's, uh, in your in your instruction in your program sometimes it needed for you to have a keyboard input, uh, so you can have the input from the uh, input hardware. Or output hardware. And after you have the waiting, uh, you're going to have store increment, uh, index, right? So all of this is process CPUs. This one is just an example if you have a program related to this storage, writing to file, and etc. It will be continue again waiting the input output, uh, which is a process of input output burst. And maybe it's going to repeat again the similar thing. So it will be a cycle of the CPU and input output burst cycle. Which is 
you need to know you need to know how to differentiate which one will handle by cpu which one will handle by input output so here you're going to see the example on the uh, simple program instruction that you give uh, into your program so first of all you can see print f enter first integer so this one <clears throat> uh, and then you scan the in uh, the value isn't it so this is the uh process that handled by cpu because you still not yet uh press anything might be this one is cpu uh boost burst so this is cpu burst and then you're going to have the input output weight why it wait because you want to wait for this value to be key in so it will be key in uh, after that you have the input output weight and for this one what will be handled okay so you can see this one is going to be input output cycle because you need okay this one is you print for the output so in your screen you're going to print enter first uh, integer so you will see this statement in your output isn't it that's why it is the output and in terms of input what is it scan f you need to press something in your keyboard so you need to press might be 8 so you're going to see 8 in this part and at the back you cannot see basically what is happened because this one is the operation that handle mathematical operation uh, for uh, okay mathematic uh, for the uh, equation given so who is will be handled not your input output because you're not going to input the value of p you're not going to input the value of 1 and etc. You already input it. You already input it. After you already input the value, now it's turn by CPU to handle, grab this value and do the mathematical process in time. So this is the CPU burst. After that, you can see it's printf again. Print means that you can see on the output on the output you're going to see it uh you have b plus b uh multiply with b plus one so it will be print the value of d okay so this is example how and where you're going to apply the input output cycle or burst and cpu uh, burst and this is all a cycle combinations of your cpu output burst cycle <clears throat> okay next you have the job and process status there are two things under job uh, and in terms of process also you need to look into several okay first of all now you already understand between the burst and cycle C, uh, burst cpu and also input output when you're going to have cpu burst and when you're going to have the input output burst okay this one is easy for you to understand now we look into a job and a process status let's look into a job first because job also having two types 
first in term of uh, job scheduling and we know it as a long term when you are having cpu scheduler it is a short term okay because you learn module 5 in scheduling you're going to look into two job scheduler and cpu scheduler and job move through the system so all of this is like a job we call also normally a task so it is a job and you need to remember two things long term for a job scheduler short term for cpu scheduler let's take a look in this diagram so you have what this one is five step model one two three four five if you still remember huh in your os that's one might be you need to remember all this it can be asked also in your test one okay might be you can give with this picture you need to fill in and correctly choose what is the a what is b c and d here uh, in module five you need to know that <clears throat> In our uh, five-step model also, there is a relationship between your step and also a scheduler. Okay, let's see first. Several scheduler are inside. First, when you are having a new step, last time you just learned on five things, five state. But now you learn that at this five-step model, you have a drop, uh, just a scheduler first of all control by job scheduler when you have a new state so you need to remember first from you have having a state of new state you're going to be controlled by a job scheduler here after that you're going to be direct go to the ready state Ready step, you can directly go to the running step. From here, you're going to go to output or you can have the interruption for you to go back to the waiting state. This one you already learned last time and it can be directly to the terminal. But you can see from your running state, to be terminated or to the output what you need is you need a control by job scheduler so here is a long term process this is a short term process eh, sorry long term process and this is uh, controlled by similar job scheduler uh, by similar scheduler and in between, you're going to have a short term, which is it all controlled by your CPU scheduler when you want to have the interrupt in between. Interrupt section, when you already run suddenly, there is interrupt, it go back to your ready state. Sometimes you need to wait because you already run like this, right? You already run, you need to wait for uh user to key in or press the value so you're going to have the input output request you see enter first integer you request to have the input value so it's going to wait for a keyboard to key in the value and then after you already key in maybe you fill in you press the nine so it will be signal to the continuous process means that okay i get the value already uh, and then i'm going to proceed back so from this diagram it can be asked you many things we can like remove any of this we give you like this diagram you need to fill in so you know that here job scheduler here also job scheduler inside will be cpu scheduler and this one interrupt this one input output this one is the uh, process 
processing. So you need to memorize the diagram. Normally, this one will be asked in your part B. Okay, this one will be asked in your part B. And your test one also, this kind of question will be coming out. I already mentioned to you, right? So please make sure you find like a picture like this uh, in your module 1 and module 3. So you are given a drop down to pick which one is the correct for levels given. Okay, next you're going to look into uh, what is basically happened when you have all this job. Uh, this one is scheduler, sorry. All this job. So what will happen? So user submit job or might be as a bash or interactive. First of all, when you have the new state, you're going to have the control by job scheduler. So inside of this, there are several things. So you're going to have the job acceptance. You have the job state change. You have similar also. Uh, three state change. Uh, including this one. Okay. So this is all state change. Accept and state change. I think there is another one. Mm, I think later on. Okay. So this one. For the asset, what will happen? It's going to put on hold and place in queue. This is the responsibilities of the job exceptions. And for the state change, this can be from new to ready, from ready to run, and from run, and then it's go to waiting, and for run uh, to a change. Terminate. So all of these are following the diagram. So in the state new to ready, it's going to waiting for a CPU because inside of this, it are uh, handled by CPU scheduler. After that, from ready to running. It will be also handled by scheduler, but it's not waiting anymore. It's when a selected for CPU and CPU will process whether it's going to running or might be after running, it's going to be ready. Then for running to waiting, of course, it's going to be required mm -hmm. unavailable resources. What by uh, what meaning by this? is that it will be uh, waiting uh, for things that unavailable. I mean like this, right? You don't have the value of D here. You don't have the integer value. So because you did not have this, the unavailable things for you to print out, maybe, so you need to wait. So you need to request for the input output to give the value to you. And lastly, on the terminate. Terminated, job completed and successful or unsuccessful. It depends on whether you get error or not in your process. So that is on job. But still, in job that is quite big. Uh, this one is job. Uh, every single uh, job that happened here in your five step model. But there is also in terms of job PCB. And then you're going to look into queuing later on. Okay. Before you go deeper on your scheduling, which is our main uh, module five. So for job PCB, is created when job scheduler accept a job. So when your job scheduler here accept a job, job accepted, it's going to create a job PVC. Okay, 
uh, and behind you cannot see that it's already created the PBC. Updated as a job executed. So if let's say you already execute uh, the program, so it's going to update. And queues using PCB to track a job. So let's say you are currently at this job. Or might be you already at this site. So you're going to have the thing of queuing from one to another to keep track your current job. And then your job PCB are content all the necessary job management to processing your data. That's why PCB link to form queuings, which is job not linked. Okay, your job is not linked, but your PCB will link in the form of queues. What is the main task? What is the task uh, for this, this job? <clears throat> it's going to manage your queuing. It's manage your queuing here, okay? It's going to manage your queuing and uh, using a several method. First is process scheduling policies and another one is process algorithm. So let's remove the next, which is under schedulings. <clears throat> Whenever your CPU become uh, ideal, the the uh, operating system must select one of the process in ready queue to be executed. So you just like waiting for a while. You just waiting for a while, and uh, for it to execute the selection process is carried out by your scheduler but it is handled by your cpu scheduler the ready queue may be ordered in various process first of all you can see in your cpu scheduling sometimes you're going to have the decisions to make in terms of switch from running to waiting this one is also similar thing what will happen what is happening here but this in term of you can see what is cpu scheduler are doing <clears throat> if let's say you can also have the non Preemptive scheduling situation. Your situation just now, situation four, uh, one until four here, similar to what will happen here when you want to move from uh, running to waiting, running to ready, uh, waiting to ready and terminate. So all of this can have also a different situation where there is no choice in term of scheduling which is a new process if one exists in the ready queue must be selected for execution so might be you can directly uh, execute your process to be uh, execute and run okay uh, might be it can be terminated which is you get the result for input output uh, for your output Okay, next you have <clears throat> uh, under non preemptive scheduling. Once the CPU has been allocated to a process, the process keeps the CPU until it releases CPU either by you terminate it or switching the waiting status. So it's depend, uh, still also similar. Uh, referring to this statement and this one is non preemptive scheduling you can also have the preemptive scheduling which is 
there is a choice. Uh, this one is no choice at all for the scheduling in your scenario one until four stated here. And preemptive scheduling is uh, normally on the situation two or three only. Okay, two or three only. Preemptive scheduling can result a rest condition where your data are shared among your several processes. First is consider the case of two processes when you need to share the data. And while one process is updating the data, it's preemptive so that the second process can run. So it's wait and then it's directly passed to the second process. And your second process will try to read the data, which is uh, sometimes it is a uh, inconsistent uh, cons uh, state. Okay, Consi consider that uh, you're going to also have this preemptive scheduling in your kernel mode. And you can also consider to interrupt this preemptive uh, scheduling when there is a cure on the crucial OS activities. Normally, in our virtual modern operating system, including your window, Mac, OS, Linux, the preemptive scheduling, are, we are using the preemptive scheduling algorithm. So most of the OS are using this scheduling. For the dispatch, uh, dispatcher module give more control on the CPU process still under your CPU scheduler. So under your CPU scheduler, which is normally what will involve in your CPU scheduler, especially for your dispatcher. So you're going to have a switching context. You have a switching uh, to the user mode from your kernel mode. You're going to switch to the user mode. Jumping to the proper location in the user program to restart the program. And for this dispatcher, there is also latency. Sometimes you need to know and calculate the uh, dispatcher latency. What is the dispatcher latency? It is a time to text for your dispatcher to stop one process and start another running. So on the like in between of uh, stop and to start the other process, we call this as a stop and then it start there is like a several delay in between we call as a dispatch latency so let's see here when you have the p a process execution so you try to stop uh, or maybe you're going to uh, start and to run another one so you try to execute the process in between for you to save state and then to restore back if needed uh, to another process. You can see this is process one already uh, end up after you save your state. If you are using your virtual machine, it also are uh, asking you whether you need to save or not because if you directly close, sometimes your, uh, your data is not saved. So normally, to save before you can start a new process, you're going to do the dispatch latency. So this is the time for you to start a new execution, a new process. So here you can also take a look what is the differentiation between preemptive uh, pre scheduling non preemptive scheduling you know just now that the big differentiation is preemptive scheduling only focus on a, a choice a, a situation of two and three 
Qua for non preemptive is a situation cover from all, which is one until two, but it is happen when there is no choice in term of your scheduling. So the rest also you can see what else the differentiation. Uh, example of what uh, whether uh, it is flexible or not. Okay, this one. So all of this you need to understand. Although it's like quite many, but you need to memorize all the differentiation between preemptive, uh, scheduling, and non preemptive. So let's see the example here when you have <coughs> a concurrent education of processes. Can I find me that will next? I do. I will double check later on for the next slide because I share this one in PDF to you. So might be you just see the first program. Uh, so in the concurrent education of the process might be you have uh, first of all your program mm. counter you have the input value you're going to store in your process P. And then concurrently you have another, you want to execute your process A. What is basically happened? So when you're going to have your dispatch latency when you have several process that you can done. So where is also this special uh, for the things? So you can see where is the uh, this special in your memory. I think later on in the next slide, we can see also. Uh, okay, this one, after that, you have the value of <coughs> program counter. We are putting in the process B. It is started at the at 1000. And, eh, where is it? So, you have the dispatcher here. Where is start the address? So if you still remember at your COA subject, you have a stack, which is in your memory. You have the temporary memory for you to uh, save all the um, value in your stack. So you are having the offset, or you know it is as a register. Now you can see it for this example, the dispatcher at the 100, at the address of 100 until uh, 5,000 uh, 5, here, starting your process A. So this is your process A, this is process B, and what else you have? Process C. So this is process C. So all the value, all our uh, process here are having their own address. You can see they have their own address. That's why you can do it uh, concurrently uh, at the same time. They have their own addresses. And starting address for this first program, you can see it start at 100. And this one is starting 5,000, 8,000, 12,000, proceed. So all of these are listed address for the process. Next, <clears throat> you can see also in terms of the time, time up whenever this happened from between all the process. You can see this one, we start with the program B, uh, program Process A, starting here at the process A, let's say in between we have the time up because we're going to uh, call our dispatcher, okay? Because we want to change for program uh, process A, we want to change to process B. After that, we want to process to C. So here you can see 
This is our dispatcher. And our dispatcher will be having the process of educating your process A just now, right? And then we want to call process B. From B, we want to call for C. So in between, there is a dispatch letter C. So mm -hmm. I'm out to uh, finish this and you're going to call out this dispatcher. Mm -hmm. And after you have the dispatcher, you will uh will you will continue your program B. And then your program B uh will also execute. Maybe in this process you're going to need uh your keyboard or the output device to stop your program B. But again, you need to have the dispatcher to start another process. So this is in terms of time. I can see might be example of the second. And this is uh, the addresses for the process. So let's say you can see here how many bursts that you are having for the CPU. So it's have the six instruction cycle for each process one. Uh, first of all, uh, two, three. Let's continue here. Four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Supposedly, it's have five right? instruction cycle. Each process. Okay, your CPU verse. You need to know. Uh, let's say at least it going to give you the instruction for you to have the call for this uh, program A. After that, of course, you're going to have the instruction for you to call the call bus to have the execute. So then you're going to have also execute this B and etc. So in this one, you have for each process, it's going to have six instruction for CPU bus. For each process, okay? Uh, process A, process B, process C, similar to what is happening here. Go back here. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So all of these we are having the CPU burst. Assume all the process execute in sequence with no parity. So you don't have any parity. Uh, and then you're going to execute the dispenser process, of course. First and third row shows the number of instruction cycle. And then second and third column show the, uh, the addressing. This one is address. <coughs> So this is all the process. Uh, I think you already know in terms of numbering. And for the first column, this one is, where is column 4? I think this one, okay, this is column 1, <laughs> column 3. This is column 2, column 4. It's really weird, the instruction. Okay, so this is column for your cycle number. And this is your uh, another column for the instruction. So, so what is mentioned by the CPU burst is this one. For each of the cycle, you're going to have six. So you have six all together. And for this eight. Let me see back the process at 1000 until 12. Actually, it's got a lot here, but it's just show you until 003. Supposedly, your program having like until 008 and uh, 005. So, for this uh, one is the addresses. Column 2 and column 4 is the addresses when you try to exec execute your process. 
So each of uh, the CPU might be your program A is handling by your CPU. It is having the six. And you can see also uh, this process A it having six. Might be it's handled by CPU. Might be it's not. Because it is just a simple process, but the one that handled by your CPU or your memory here, your CPU will handle the dispatcher. You can see here, dispatcher modules give control of the CPU process. So that's why your CPU will be handle this uh, dispatcher. That's why at this side, we have six 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 for the dispatcher process cycle okay that is the example for this uh, process when you are having three process concurrently you have process a b and c it's already give you the addresses you need to have the dispatcher also for CPU scheduling to take off. And in terms of this example, is following the sequence like this. But you can also have, might be later on, from this C, you uh, you go to B back. From this B, you, uh, B, you're going to go to A back. It's depend on how you're going to instruct your program. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this one still similar under concurrent execution for the example here given. I think this is similar also but in terms of the picture of diagram. So you can see in terms of the uh, process A, B, C. When it's going to run? If you compare to this part, first number we're going to run the A. Process A. That's why you can see running is the black color, okay? Now, first at the 0 until 5. Uh, okay, we start here, let's say, at 0 second. And this one is in terms of cycle, okay? This one is second in terms of the time or duration. 0 until 5, we start with our process A. After process A, we're going to call what? Dispatcher. Dispatcher, we have six all together in cycle. <clears throat> we start here. And you can see it's not collapsed to each other. It will after that. And in this example, after your dispatcher, A will be called to do the B. B will be having a process to run this and you can see after it's already uh, it's already call or might be run it's going to wait wait is means that ready you can see after that a will be ready before that b and c is always ready to be called by your system after you finish your B here, you're going to do again your dispatcher. So this is second by letter on your dispatcher. So after your dispatcher, you're going to do your program C. That's why you can see start your program C now. Let's continue. After C, you're going to go to the dispatcher again. After the patient, you call A. And then B, similar to this process. And at this example, uh, when you are having the uh, request for the input output request, might be, uh, it doesn't mention in the example, okay? Doesn't mention in the example. Uh, you have also sometimes, you can also block the process. So then it's not going to be ready or... Hmm, waiting anymore but it's depend on the process it's not going to be totally similar like this might be you can also 
after C here, you're going to block the process to be waiting. So it's only be between this and this only. Okay. <clears throat> so there is another example. Okay. In this scenario, in, in this scenario, it's more clear rather than for this example, it's just give you only a brief picture like this. Uh, and then you make your own scenario. After A, you go B. After B, you go C. This depending on the uh, numbering mm -hmm. address is given. So you know, okay, which one is the process. So okay. now let's take a look on the example. For example, given, <coughs> it gives you the address address for three process. Okay, you have process A, B, C. Okay, similar on your server, uh, previous example, you have three process. And of course, you're going to hash this picture in memory. So you're going to draw memory address and you have uh, this picture start at 200 until 204. Means that your cycle <coughs> you're going to have like five only. Okay, but it's okay. The maximum is mentions here. Okay, we follow uh, first the instruction. We try to draw our table. So this is our this picture. Next we have C. Eh, yeah, C. C start first. At the 2000 until 2015, or gram C. Uh, at the 5000 and 5020, we have A. And lastly, we have uh, 2000 until 2050 is our B. So this is first thing that you need to do. If you were given with this kind of example scenario. But you can see it's much more clear in explanation. So you know, okay, where is the things that we'll be having. Next, let's read the instruction. The process are running concurrently. Similar, okay. On a single processor system. If you have a single processor, means that you can only and and execute and execute you cannot uh, run a and b together process and request input output sources similar also just now you exam you have example of process b to have the input output uh, resources at the instruction cycle 4 and it's going to wait for 30 instruction cycle then a process B requests the input output resources or B also having the similar uh, and it's going to have the instruction cycle of 35 and waiting for the 20 instruction cycle. So all the scenario is already given uh, clearly here. But then complete the figure by drawing the process step like this. Okay, process that you need to draw <clears throat> and process uh, and drawing the process that for all process up to 70 instruction cycle with three different indicator which is running, ready and block. Indicator is the one that you just now show. It's depend on you. Maybe you want to have like this. Maybe you have like this for running. This one is for block. This one is for uh, this one is running ready. So it's depend on you. But you need to draw the indicator so that uh people will know okay which one is for ready, which one is for uh running and block. It is not necessary to follow mm. example here. It's depend on you. Okay. Assume that maximum CPU burst uh, for each process is six instruction cycles give you already. So how are you going to draw uh, the answer? 
So after you already done this part uh, like this, you need to do the second step is to put all the addresses uh, for process A, B and C. So you can draw letter on for this example, uh, dispatcher. 12 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 Silap lah. This one is C. This one is B. So, please make sure you draw it step by step. Okay. Now, we already done this part. Next, we need to have this uh, flow. How it's going to be look like. But, let me check where it's going to go and so on. Process and request. Where the instruction then okay process B request the input of cycle and wait for the cycle. Okay, after this <coughs> it didn't give uh, mentions about process C. So after this, what you need to do, you need to draw uh this sequence. After you have the combined trace process, you will draw the process step. So this is example of your process step, but this one is, I think it's uh, called the similar process or not. It will start A and then B and then C. But in this example, uh, process A, request input output. And then process B, process C, it's not mentioned here. <coughs> I think it's going to follow, it's not going to follow addresses. Supposedly, it should be written over here. What is the process? So, let's take a look basically what is the process. It will start at the uh, process A and then process B, okay? After that, might be, uh, we need to assume because it's until up 70 cycle, then it's going to have the three all together. Okay, first, a uh, process A. Process A will be running first. It's already mentioned. Process A will be running first. Uh, and then it have the and input resources and instruction for cycle. So only for time. That's why you have for cycle <coughs> until up here only. For okay. And then what you're going to do? You're going to do the dispatcher. This one is running. You can see it just give you a different color. Uh, if you don't want to put this color, you just need to follow the running, which is black color. You can put the dispatcher here. Okay, this this is uh, depend on you, as I mentioned. After you already done for the running part. You're going to have the dispatcher here. How many dispatcher that you're going to have? Uh, process CPU will be took until up 6 cycle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Why is just 5 here? Uh, you can have maximum until 6. It's give you the CPU burst can be until up 6 cycle but your dispatcher is only from 200 mm. to 204 that's why you have 5 just now in the previous example our dispatcher have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 that's why your cycle are having 6 okay this one is just to make you uh, like confused Eh, which one are uh, you need to follow this or this okay so you have only five in cycle five five okay let's see after you finish this 
you're going to call just now it's called as a process B then process B request input resources instruction is the T5 cycle waiting to uh, waiting up to 20 instruction cycle so you should have input output resources as 35 so you supposedly have uh, 35 in waiting but you can see here <coughs> you can have only maximum 6 okay you can have only maximum 6 although it mentions that <laughs> you want to have the request of 35 but it's already mentions that maximum six so that's why if you have like four is okay because it's still in between if you have beyond than six you cannot uh, have a request more than that because you already limit the cpu burst and you have the maximum you're going to do the maximum running so running is maximum after that of course you're going to continue with this pressure after this pressure we assume because we want to continue until 70 you're going to call for the c c also it doesn't mention in here uh whether how many cycles so you need to know that it will be maximum six okay if let's say although it's uh uh didn't mention anything you know that that this is the range let's say for six okay let's say for six it's only like two thousand until two thousand four so although it's already mentioned is six but because c eh, because your C is only five cycle that allow for the addresses, so you only have five. It depends also in the size. So then you continue <coughs> uh, following for this one might be uh, you can see we call the program after we done for the C because this one is not given eh, instruction then you call the B before you can go uh, get the B request you need to have the 20 instruction cycle okay supposedly you're going to have 6 for here supposedly 4 is only for A because you have the request on input output cycle okay this one is request before you start the uh, process a before you have the process c b you're going to request your input output cycle maximum is six so that's why you can see before you start a going to have four before you start a, you're going to have uh, 4. Supposedly, it's going to be go to the A. Let me check, uh, double check whether the answer is correct or not, okay? But you need to remind, uh, remember, if you have the addresses, you need to follow the maximum. Similar to your dispatcher just now. And the maximum CPU already started. You only have, I think, a and C maybe. A and C request input output instruction for C is doesn't mention anymore in here. So I can see uh, to go to the A is four to go to the C also four. This one I think after this is going to be A. So the C instruction is not here. I need to find out what is uh not included in the segment okay that is how you can be asked okay how you can be asked in term of this type of question as long as you understand how to draw you need to follow basically the instruction given mm -hmm. in the written up question okay this one is just 
instruction cycle or might be you can have the dispatcher just now i mentioned you can draw like this you can also draw like this basically it's similar okay you can try to do the exercise here what is the process that for each a y z uh, so you need to calculate the value for a how many that you have i think it is something new. oh this one is process that what is happening here and for this y what is happening because you are doing the dispatcher and for the uh, z it is similar things you're going to run the process a so what is happening for the process so you need to go back for the stage process whether it is already or whether it is running state whether it's waiting state so that is on the step. Uh, what time now? Okay, we already have uh, already done uh, one hour. Uh, we need to have a breakfast. Uh, then we continue to our next sub topic, which is scheduling criteria. Okay, mm. five minute break.
Okay, let's continue. Yeah, where is it? Okay, sorry. Uh, I want to continue back the first example, this one, because I'm afraid that you're not going to understand. Uh, let we calculate it uh, carefully. I need to have, I think, to draw exactly where. Okay, I copy paste this instruction. And I put on top. So we can see and compare. Okay, we have several instruction and Okay, what else we need? We need this one. Because it's going to be uh, needed later on. If you did not understand, it cannot move to the next. It's now quite blue. Okay. Now, let's see here. You already given with three process. Okay. Normally, it's going to be, we assume it's to be sequence. Okay. After, after A, it should be B. After B, it should be C. After C, it's going to be uh, back to the A. Okay. A, B, C. A, B, C and so on. Supposedly, it's going to be here. Uh, later, you're going to see why it's going to be like from A, uh, C to A and etc. Okay, let's see. Go, go back first here at the beginning. Okay, it's mentioned process A request input output as cycle 4. Means that at cycle 4, this one is cycle, okay. At cycle 4, first of all, you're going to run, okay, run this A. At cycle 4, after running, although <coughs> you can see A is supposedly having until uh, 21 addresses. But because at the cycle 4, it's mentioned it's going to request. It's going to request for the input output. So if request, it means like it block the process first. So that's why you can see here it's going to block. Because it's 
uh, uh, is going to do a request input output starting at the cycle 4 and it's going to wait until up 34 cycle it's going to wait for user to key in or press any keyboard okay so this one is going to wait yeah, because it's request start request and waiting until 30 but you can see although it's mentioned 30 instruction cycle wait to 30 uh, instruction cycle but you can see you start from here at 4 and you finish here at 30, uh, 34. You can see? So, means that you are having a 30 uh, instruction cycle, isn't it? Okay. Then, <clears throat> this one you block. But after this, as follow a sequence A, B, C. Before, in between a sequence, you need to have the dispatcher, dispatcher. A, B, C. This is a supposedly the sequence. Okay, this is supposedly the sequence. So, at the cycle 4, it's going to start calling or request for the input output cycle. And then, of course, when it's blocked, it's going to start with the dispatcher. And our dispatcher are having five cycle only. So for five cycle, <coughs> so for five cycle, that's why you start from four until one, two, three, four, five. After five here, you're going to stop and you're going to continue with B. So how about B? B, when you start here, okay, you start here at 9. Cycle number 9. Then you're going to see B, request input output, or this one is after this at 35. It's okay. And then you're going to have the maximum of 6, isn't it? Mentioned in here. So you can run until six only that's why you after you finish six you're going to start with your dispatcher now you start with the dispatcher five cycle again five and after that you go to the c c it doesn't mention here but you know it is a six instruction cycle also for the maximum so it's uh, it's going to be later on go to the dispatcher okay supposedly what we going to call after this supposedly is go to the A isn't it supposedly at this 31 second supposedly A will be running but why currently it is B because now you can see at this after this special finish at 31, you can see your A still blocked. It's still waiting for instruction cycle. It's still waiting. So, it's still blocked. That's why you cannot suddenly close and then run. Cannot, okay? So, because it's blocked, because it's blocked, you're going to go for a... B directly. Okay, you start B. Normally, you're going to have six cycle. Supposedly, you're going to have six. But you can see there is another instruction here at cycle 35. At 35 here, your process B will request the input output resources. So, supposedly it's showing to have 6 but another 2 cycle is direct to close. It's going to request the <coughs> input output sources. Request means it's going to block. Anyone cannot running or interrupt it. 
because it's already uh, start with the uh, instruction input output resources okay that's why you have only four here after that you can see how long Okay, how long is that? From here, we start at 35. We have all together is 20 instruction cycle. So, means that 35 times 20, you get 55. Until 25 is going to... It's going to... <laughs> it's going to uh, stop the waiting. Because it's only until 24 instruction cycle only to wait. Okay, that's why it's until up here only. Okay, let's see after that. After you already do this direct to B. After B done, it's going to be blocked and you're going to call the dispatcher. That's why here your dispatcher will running. The dispatcher will be running. 5 cycle or so after that dispatcher you're going to go back to C why you cannot go to the A because this is follow the sequence A to B B to C C to A supposedly but if it is blocked you're going to go direct to B and then B go back to the C so you have another 6 cycle after 6, <coughs> you're going to go to the dispatcher first and you will run the A. Okay, dispatcher 5 cycle and then after dispatcher, you go to the A. 6 in the maximum. It is not 5 because the maximum is 6. It's now Y4 because it call at the cycle 4, it start blocking. Until finish the 6 here, A will be called the dispatcher and dispatcher will be later on called the B. Okay, dispatcher call first until 5. <clears throat> so here you're going to have a dispatcher and then you call the C. So C here, this one is what? Until 70. Until 70 instruction. <clears throat> After here, supposedly you're going to have all together the maximum as a 6. After C here, later on you will continue with A. And then you're going to continue with B. And C is depend because this is the only instructions that given. Okay? But it asks you to stop until... Uh, 70. You check until 70 what is the uh, process. So that is how you <coughs> you're going to draw and execute. But you can see over here uh, you need to follow also the maximum value that you can have in cycle for the running time. This is for your running time. <coughs> okay, this one is similar only in terms of the display this part is, is only different okay now let's we go direct to the scheduler criteria i think we're going to until uh point number four or three only because uh we have another more slide. We will uh, do it in our next class. <clears throat> For the scheduling criteria, there is several criteria that you need to remember, which is CPU utilization. So what is the purpose of CPU utilization? It is keep the CPU as busy as possible. And then you have throughput. Throughput, later on you will have the equation for throughput. Throughput is number of process that complete their execution for time unit. Example might be 5 per second, 7 per second. And then 
uh, turn around time, amount of time to execute a particular process. Waiting time, total amount of time a process has been waiting already queued. Respond time, amount of time it takes from when a request was submitted until the first response. So you can try to look into what is the meaning by each of the scheduling criteria. Optimization criteria for scheduling. So you have also uh, the criteria for scheduling. <clears throat> Maximum CPU utilization. Keep CPU busy 100% of time. Maximum throughput. What is the maximum throughput time around? Um, which, which is minimum time around? Is to move the job into and out uh, for a system quickly. Minimum waiting time. Move job out of the ready quick uh, queue quickly and lastly minimum response time quickly turn around instructive uh, request so that is the things that you need to know but it is of course a theory you need to understand and to memorize in our next class we're going to look into scheduler and the rest it is not much uh, another half uh, slide another 20 another half slide to go i think more than half so please make sure you try this question <clears throat> uh, try to uh, do it and play around with the addresses you change the cycle time and draw your own uh, your own uh, process state okay and you, you draw your process state your own and you can see also just now for the last one okay why suddenly it is not i guess i think you will get uh like 69 or 68 uh please double check you can try to draw it by yourself you need to calculate the maximum of numbers addresses that are available or for this special is okay you can reuse 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 uh, five, 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 five. But for the process address, it need to be follow the addresses. Okay. In term of C, you can see here you have six, six. You already have twelve. Now you have only sixteen. So that's why you only have last another four. Then you cannot do it anymore because it's already complete for the rest here for a you need to calculate might be later on how many is available for b also but it will stop until here because of uh for this part is already finished so you need to have this table you need to have the instruction and you need to know the flow. Instruction cycle maximum. We need to draw and also the CPU maximum. Please try to do the example and change with your friend, uh, changing the value because this one is uh, normally will be asked in your part B. Later you will be also bumped on another uh, calculation term of average waiting time which is you already learned here what is the uh, waiting time what is true put what is time around turn around so all of these will be having their own way for you to calculate <clears throat> okay any other question do you have any question for especially for the example one here because this one is much more critical. For the rest, I think it's just for your understanding in the theory part. But if you don't know how to apply the calculation, uh, this one is quite huge in the marks for your part B. 
so better for you to try to do the exercise a lot of time okay if you okay if you uh didn't have any question maybe we can stop our class and we will continue again with our next class please make sure you stand by and remember uh our test will be 27 <laughs> i don't know when i'm going to go back oh, oh i go back at 28 ah Adoi. Okay, uh, meet you again in our next class. Uh, don't forget to stay.